to the Influencer Marketing Blueprint, where we teach e-commerce brands the three-step formula that drives revenue, not just likes. I'm Cody Woodick. And I'm Taylor Lagasse, and we're here to guide you to influencer marketing success. Let's get started. All right, everybody, back with another episode. 2023 is around the corner, and we're going to be talking about something very specific for that to help you guys plan your influencer marketing budgets. What's up, Taylor? What's happening? What's happening? I'm ready to talk What's all happening? things budgets. All things budgets. Yeah, we got a financial guru over here. Make sure you spend all your budget with the Kinship, the good guys at Kinship. But we're going to be talking about the Influence Marketing Budget Calculator. Can you see my screen, everybody? Tell the video and audio listeners exactly what we're looking at. Influence Marketing Budget Calculator here. Specifically for seating, correct? Predominantly? Well, just overall oh. overall business, like four quarter, like just take them through four quarter accounting, I think maybe just to begin. Yeah, four quarter accounting principles. We're just operating under the assumption that, hey, 25% of revenue will be uh, dedicated to profit margin, 25% dedicated to your COGS or your cost of delivery, 25% to your OPEX. So we're operating out of that assumption beneath that, underneath those four quarter accounting. If you look at row four, zero to five million target breakdown, you'll just see, hey, people are a little bit more willing to acquire customers at a higher rate just because you're a new business. Hey, you got to earn your keep. It's just the way it works. Sorry about it. But after you get past five million, we break it down back to that 25, 25, 25, 25. But yeah. Yeah. I'll so pass the baton. Basically, this this sheet shows. I mean, if you started going, if you're a ten million dollar, I think that was ten. Nailed it. These are target breakdowns. I don't think any business hits this perfectly, but as soon as you start going underneath two million, that's where you see that difference in the forty percent in terms of cap. crafty cost crafty. to acquire a customer. Is this is this sheet going to be in the in the notes for this episode? Uh, maybe you got to commit to my GoFundMe. To help support. <laughs> so I'll link the GoFundMe below. But yeah, we'll put the sheet in the show notes. So yeah, so basically you That's enter great. your top line revenue goal or basically your revenue from last year to get to a simple numbers breakdown. And so obviously what falls within cost to acquire a customer is your total marketing budget. And then this is all going to feed into eventually an influence marketing budget. So basically... Let's say you're a $2 million brand listening to this, your total marketing budget, if we're going off the 40% CAC rule, would be 800,000 big ones. There's obviously a lot of other things that could be included within this 800,000, but very simply to just keep this is just paid media spend, brand marketing spend, and then of course, influencer marketing budget. And so Taylor, why don't you just talk them through the differences and the splits and maybe why. Yeah. Predominant majority of your spend will go to paid media. So that's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, search, Google yeah. ads, email, all of the above. That's majority of your acquisition channels, right? And majority of that spend to break it down even a step further probably will go towards Facebook ads. This is where across all those acquisition channels, a lot of the time we'll be able to acquire customers at the cheapest rate. Uh, so that's where a majority of your spend will go. Brand marketing, going to get a piece of the pie at 12.5% of it. And then, of course, influencer marketing, like Cody said as well, will get another piece of that pie, which will serve as its own channel for organic distribution. But then it will just help to supplement uh, a lot of the paid media spend with creative, which will drive the ability to get spend profitably. Yep. And we have 5% of revenue or 12.5% of your total marketing budget. And you know, we've also, I think, Taylor, you've communicated certain things even via Twitter or any, anything like that as far as like 2% of revenue. So I would say 2 to 5% you can kind of take from revenue or you can split it into your marketing budget. But just for sake of example, we'll just keep it at 5% of revenue here. So then this gets into your total influence marketing budget, which is 100000 broken up over the course of 12 months. 
And so what we would recommend is 80% of your budget dedicated to seating. And this would include your seating budget calculator in terms of how much it costs to actually send out free product or to invest in sending out a bunch of free product of your COGS plus shipping. So that's inclusive of that 80,000 if we're going to split 80-20. And then 20% being saved for getting influencers under contract. So uh, if you guys remember from past episodes, how we talked about moving people up the influencer marketing pyramid as they prove to be a great partner committed to you as a brand and a long-term relationship. So it starts with seeding and then it moves into affiliate relationships. And then very quickly it can move into an ambassador role or monthly UGC as part of that ambassador role. They're on your website. Um, And obviously as you move up on a greater and greater tier of influence, you could be under contract pretty quickly. So conservatively, I would say 20% being saved for getting influencers under contract. But then there's all these other things that are on the side. Taylor, what do you think of these like influencer discovery tool platforms, your affiliate programs, a macro partnership we have on the sheet here for people just listening to audio are not required, but could be part of your budget. So that would obviously go into the the hundred thousand. Yeah. I mean, if you're planning for your first year of influencer marketing, I would stick to these two categories. Start here. And then for influencer discovery tools, I would just use like a free option potentially. But if you're actually planning yeah. to spend 100K, maybe go get an identification tool that can be really resourceful and helpful. We use Aspire. That will actually yeah. cost. Ambassador affiliate program, flag bearer, macro partnership. If it's the first year, flag bearer, macro partnership probably wouldn't invest in it in the first month. Like just figure out with as many people as possible yeah. who's going to work for your brand, work your way up from a micro to macro. Ambassador and affiliate program, I probably would. Yeah, I'd probably start building that yeah. out. People that prove to post from seeding right away onboard them to an affiliate program for sure. So I'd allocate some budget there. But what are your what are your thoughts? For sure. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, probably you can scroll back up to the top and just see what level, like what's your revenue per year as a brand. And so, for example, like, Unless you're 20 million and above, I want to even be entertaining a flag bearer macro partnership because once you become, you know, 10x this, now you're at what is that? A million dollars of your influencer marketing budget. Now you can afford uh, a macro partnership. But I wouldn't even be entertaining those, even for some brands that 20 million dollars is just like that's just kind of like the minimum benchmark where I would potentially consider it. That doesn't mean it should automatically go in your budget, but yeah, these affiliate programs, some of these influencer discovery tools, I would use the free ones at your disposal, but there's definitely ones that are on the cheaper end, especially if you're going to invest, like you're saying, Taylor, investing 80,000 into seeding. And that means you're going to be identifying a lot of influencers throughout the year. It's just going to make your team's life easier. <laughs> But also what's potentially inclusive in this budget is agencies that you work with, which isn't even on the table. So I should probably just put Kinship as a line item, don't you think? All the money goes to Kinship, yep. (laughs) Your contract. All right, yeah, so pretty quick episode here today, guys. Just wanted to talk you through um, how to set your budgets for 2023. So kind of just recap, go through the top level is entering on the sheet is based on your revenue per year. If you're 5 million above, you're spending 25% of your budget on CAC. If you're under 5 million, 40%. And splitting that marketing budget evenly from 75% going to paid and 12 and a half split between, or the other 25 split between two things, brand marketing. So like content, PR events, and then the rest would be influence marketing. And then of that 5% of revenue or 12.5% of your total marketing budget, that would become 80% of it would go towards seeding, 20% would go towards best performing influencers under contracts. And this actually kind of works pretty well with Taylor, what you were saying about like whatever you invest on content, you should spend two to three times on paid media. This actually works out kind of nice. Even more than one, actually. Yeah, yeah, so it works out perfectly. But we'll put the sheet in the show notes Keep it short and to the point. Appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Have a great day, everybody. All right, that's all for today. 
If you'd like some help developing your influence marketing campaign, go ahead and DM us on Twitter. Links are in the description. Or you can head to kinship.co to learn more and you can book a call there. That's K-Y-N-S-H-I-P dot C-O. At kinship.co, you also find tools, templates, and resources all designed to help you grow an influencer campaign that drives visibility and sales, not just likes. Thanks for tuning in as always, and we'll see you next week.